How many of us knew about our family incomes as we grew up? So something as important as money that determines the quality of our lives. So, uh, hello everyone. This is me, yeah. Sumani. I'm the program lead of Unlimited Ventures. So I'd like to welcome you all in uh, Sri Love's Tech Nepal 2020. So uh, this Hi. is an online com competition that we, have go we are going to uh, do this year. Uh, so I would like to welcome our uh, lovely startups and our wonderful juries uh, and, and the audience. I hope they uh, will be coming, kicking in in a while. So um, I would like to um, do a brief intro about uh, Unlimited Ventures and what it's all about. So Unlimited Ventures, we have been running, it's more than about like six years. We have been supporting the various entrepreneurship programs in Nepal, supporting the, uh, the entrepreneurship ecosystem here in Nepal. So uh, entrepreneurship is a major asset uh, uh, now to uh, kick in with the economic economy of our country as well. So. Um, we have been conducting various kind of global pitch competitions. Um, this is the second year um, of us with She Loves Tech. Um, last year we had uh, Sonika Manander from Alloyed uh, as our winner. Um, so let's see uh, who kicks in this time. And um, without for, uh, further delay, I would like to uh, introduce our lovely judges, um, Tenjing Ji from uh, Team Ventures. Um, I so I would like to uh, do a little so short intro from his side to all of you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sumani, for the uh, introduction. So my name is uh, Tenzin. I am the CEO of a company here in Kathmandu called Team Ventures. Uh, we've been operating here for now around four years now. This is our fourth year running. And basically, we are a local I guess we can describe it as an investment holding company. Uh, we do different investments in the form of uh, long-term, short-term, uh, private equity, uh, venture financing, and so forth. Uh, in the last probably in three plus years, we've probably done 10 to 12 different investments in different businesses and sectors, uh, such as uh, startups, food technology, uh, real estate, property development, merchant banking, uh, stock markets, uh, uh, now we're getting into things such as uh, electric vehicles, uh, agro, and so on. Uh, so co uh, constantly trying to diversify our portfolio. And yeah, I'm very much looking forward to hear the uh, presentations today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tenjinji, for your wonderful presentation. And one of our juries uh, uh, is our co-founder from Sheila Loves Tech as well. So uh, welcome, Rian. Uh, so I'd like to give uh, a little... Uh, like intro from your side, I would want that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Suwani. Um, we're so pleased to, to do this with you for the second year. Uh, my name is Leanne Robes. I am the co-founder of She Loves Tech. Uh, she Loves Tech uh, is now the world's largest startup competition for women in technology, and I'll speak about that a little bit later. Um, but for myself, um, She Loves Tech is my fourth company that I've co-founded. I co-founded two other tech companies and one real estate and hospitality company. Um, so I've been in entrepreneurship for a while. Uh, I do a lot of mentorship. So I'm a lead mentor for um, Facebook for the accelerator program. I also am a lead mentor for uh, the Singapore Tourism Board Tech Accelerator. Um, I am an Obama leader. Um, and I'm also um, an honorary Microsoft uh, regional director. Uh, so I advise uh, Microsoft on, um, um, on topics related to tech and entrepreneurship. Um, very, very pleased. Um, so excited to see the startups uh, today. Um, and we're just so happy to really be part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne, for a wonderful introduction. Now we have our Sarita Ji uh, as another jury member. So I'd like her to do an intro. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Sarita Nupani. I'm a program coordinator at Padmasri International College. It's really a um, pleasure to meet you all, and I wish you all our startups all the best. And I'm really excited to 
look forward to seeing their presentation and what they have to share with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarita Ji. So it's been a long, long process that we are going through. It's been months that we have been uh, doing with the application process and for the startups as well. So I hope you guys uh, do well and all the best. So without further delay, I would uh, request by, one by one the startups to come in as per their name. And uh, we will be um, sharing our screen for the pictures. So first we have Nepal. Hey, Sumani, sorry, could it, is it okay um, if I uh, uh, just also give an introduction for She Loves Tech and, and okay. share some of our uh, 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 videos? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, definitely. great. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, you know, thank you so much, uh, Sumani and your team and Limited. This is the second year that She Loves Tech is uh, in Nepal. We started She Loves Tech in 2015. So actually, this is now our sixth year of doing She Loves Tech. And I thought that many of you may not be as familiar with She Loves Tech. So I thought that I'll speak to you um, just for a couple of minutes more about She loves tech and about what we do uh, and what there is to be expected as well for the startup so they understand like what um, part uh, you know the greater part of what she loves tech and and the greater picture okay let me just share my screen very quickly okay great can everybody see my screen yes yep okay sorry let me just go all the way to the beginning um so she loves tech as i mentioned you know is uh, now the world's largest startup competition for women technology and we strongly believe that without women we're unable to solve um, some of the world's largest uh, greatest challenges you know we've um, been around for the last six years and we really aim to help entrepreneurs um, to take their business to the next level. And we really want to be involved in their journey. So what we do for startups is we really create this global ecosystem for women technology. Um, but through our different programs, we also champion the best entrepreneurs through our education, through our mentorship, and we scale really great and transformative technology to help solve some of the world's greatest challenges. So to this date, we are, uh, She Loves Tech today is in over 30 uh, international countries, um, Nepal being one of them. Um, we have thousands of uh, startups that have come through She Loves Tech Doors. Um, and now actually the, our startups have raised more than 150 million USD in funding. And we've had more than 1 billion media impressions. So uh, these are some of the countries that we are in, uh, Nepal being one of them, and we're just so excited to be doing this again with Unlimited. So thank you so, so much. And um, I would just like to just show you very, very quickly um, uh, a, a video taken from our last year uh, a conference so that uh, you can get a greater scale of what our conference looks like. So Nepal is one out of 30 countries that we are in. So we're doing the global final, the local finals for Nepal. And what happens is that each country then will have a representative to represent the country as, our, as their winner to then compete on a global stage. So you would imagine all the countries that were in has um, a global winner. And last year we had Sonica from uh, Alloy Technologies uh, who is so fantastic and has won so many awards and she's just a, such a wonderful person. And you would be able to see her later in this video. Um, but yes, so we'd love to show this video. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to She Loves Tech 2019. You are now a part of the largest women in tech startup competition in the world. Over 80% of our 70,000 teachers are, are female and I just feel 
fortunate that I'm working with them every day. Today, they are working on this innovative technology platform. The moms, now they feel so happy with this global teaching service that they're able to obtain on a VIP kit platform. Very很多女性的创业者身上看到很多的闪光的地方，这是不是一个好的创业者？因为他其实是男性、女性没有关系的，也不要去贴这样的标签。每个时代都会有自己的创业公司啊，只不过他用不同的形式在站。其实今天需
financial literacy training materials that provide different levels of training, get people familiar with the financial language and understand proper money management. The trainings will include budgeting, saving, preparing a cushion amount for financial emergencies, investing, debt, financial planning and retirement, insurance, and how they can make use of our platform to gain access to various financial services from anywhere, or even use our platform as merchants to increase their business reach. Digital wallets are practical only if smartphone and internet services are uh, available. The solution is supported by increasing mobile penetration rate, which is currently greater than 100%, declining charge of data per unit, um, development of high-speed internet, internet penetration of 50%, and growing physical infrastructure. Having access to these resources can increase our GDP and can include underbanked population like SMEs, women, and population at the bottom of the pyramid. Now, talking about the traction, our current ecosystem consists of banking and financial institutions, which is online and offline vendors, who are also known as merchants, agents, and customers. We already have 31 plus uh, banking and financial institutions in our network, which is still expanding. Our pl uh, platform caters to two types of users, customers and merchants. We already have a platform that provides bank transfers, utility payments, merchant payments, wallet to wallet transfer, offline payment through SMS mode, mobile top up and QR payment. We are still in the development phase and already have an organic user base of 500 plus customers and 500 plus agents with our marketing or advertisement. And we expect a growth of user base, uh, user base by 196% in the upcoming year. Our team consists of a highly talented individuals from diversified fields. We have Mr. Thakur Prasad Adhikari as financial consultant, Mr. Fadi Klaus Sarma as marketing director, and Mr. Rosam Kambu as senior IT consultant, and we are myself as chief operating officer. Now talking about the business model, for revenue stream, we have commission on each transaction, including top-up bill payment, merchant payments. We have um, uh, charge on product listing by, uh, to the merchants, and we charge uh, on cash withdrawal to bank accounts. But we have uh, we offer free money transfers to and from the wallet. When we look at the uh, market opportunity, we have total mobile internet users as total available market payments or uh, payment gateway users as service uh, serviceable available market, regular users as service serviceable obtainable market, and about competition. Uh, our competitors are all the digital wallets who are also licensed by Nepal as bank to work, in, work as a payment service provider, and especially Kalki, who have Smart Chori program, which is targeted to women, which offers guided video lessons on how uh, they can use their banking and other services in their application. Our competitive advantage is that we'll be providing a complete digital uh, financial solution, including basic wallet and functionalities, along with resources for digital financial literacy. Now for Milestone, we have divided our plan into two phase, phase one and phase two. For phase one, we have a full phase application with digital financial services, along with training materials in the areas mentioned earlier. In phase two, we have development of additional training materials for SMEs and entrepreneurs, and platform to connect this business and now entrepreneurs to VCs. Now for growth projection, with some hiccups in the initial years due to marketing cost and other indirect costs, we expect very less in terms of revenue, but once everything is optimized and efficient operation takes place, we expect our profit to grow along with the a steep price in the user base. We have a vision of reaching 1 million user, users by 2025 with a compound annual growth rate, a growth rate of 196% in user base and compound annual growth rate of 59% in our profit from the current year. Uh, as fun, we will be needing 88,000 US dollars for completion of the first phase. Now, I'd like to end by saying uh, this quote. Well, it is true that money can buy happiness. Good money management can make a big difference in people's lives and therefore their happiness, especially over time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Malika. Uh, that's, that was a really wonderful presentation. And um, I would like to uh, uh, request Tenjing Zi, um, Zian, and Sarita Ji one by one to uh, ask if there are any queries from your side. So Tenjing Zi, over to you. 
Uh, sure. Thank you, Sumani. Um, so first of all, Malika, a very nice presentation. Good job to you. you. Yeah, it was really good. You covered a lot in just a couple of minutes. So I was almost trying to keep up. There's so much to digest there. But overall, a very nice presentation. Uh, my question to you is uh, particularly in the context of Nepal. Uh, you know, fintech and things like this is already a huge uh, global phenomenon. And one can argue that uh, in due course of time, it will be so in Nepal. Uh, but given kind of where the market is now, uh, you know, as you pointed out, some of the problems, you know, low financial literacy, uh, people like all of us who live here in Nepal know that our tech infrastructure is uh, really poor. Uh, once you move away from core cities like Kathmandu, uh, which is 80, 90 percent of Nepal outside of Kathmandu, uh, digital uh, infrastructure and services are extremely uh, poor. Um, and uh, as you rightfully pointed out, uh, ex, uh, financial literacy is also uh, extremely poor. So kind of given that context now, which is the current reality, um, how do you plan to get people on board and attracted uh, to your platform? The reason I ask that is because there are, you know, uh, companies here. You pointed out some of the competition that have you know, done reasonably successful, especially in the urban areas, right? Uh, as far as I know, they've not, or they've had serious challenges in terms of going to uh, semi-rural to rural areas, which is actually 80, 90 percent of Nepal's population, right? Uh, so, kind of, what is your plan for addressing, quote unquote, the real market, which is because that is where the real financial uh, literacy challenges are right outside of the city where people have lower literacy levels less access to technology and so on so how do you actually plan to tap into in my opinion what is the real market oh, okay so actually what happened is that uh, since we um, since we on uh, got on board with the agents that we have as of now since they are already working in a telecommunication sector they are finding it difficult to use this kind of uh, financial services so i was uh, like we were uh, so we had this thing uh, okay uh, what if people working in this sector are ha having some difficulties using these kind of services maybe it was the uh, the main issue was financial literacy you know because we do not quite have a basic financial literacy program in the uh, uh, early period uh, of our life which is a kind of um, basic requirement if uh, i may say so so uh, what i thought uh, what we thought was uh, the main problem is financial literacy so maybe we could start off by building uh, good financial habits and em empowering people with actually the knowledge first before actually providing them the services so uh, this platform would be to uh, provide uh, necessary knowledge regarding uh, like i have already mentioned uh, saving budgeting how to save money how to uh, grow the money and how they can and protect the money so when they will have uh, some kind of uh, you know knowledge about how they can manage uh, their finances then they can move on to use this kind of platform to uh, grow their business to uh, to to you know have some kind of access to these kind of financial uh, platforms I have a thank you so much, uh, Malika, for uh, you know a wonderful presentation. Yeah. Um, I love what you say at the end that um, because what I see as well that you know we we emphasize a lot of inequality being the pay gap, but it's actually really the wealth gap, right? So how do we use financial tools like this to be able to really equalize the wealth gap, right, and give opportunities um, to people at that bottom bottom of the pyramid? So my question is around what you, uh, the traction that you've already done. So you said that you had 31 um, over partners for uh, banking um, institutions, right? And 500 over customers. What are these customers are, you know, uh, maybe you could uh, describe a little bit about how you're working with these institutions. And then secondly, these 500 over customers, are they, you know, the education piece that you just talked about? Are they in the e-wallet? What are you, um, what is the, uh, Nepal pay time doing for them? Uh, so currently what we have is we have a platform to access these kind of financial services. We do not have uh, the knowledge part of it yet because we are still building on it. So uh, what we uh, so what the customers are currently doing is they are using uh, banking and financial services. They are using merchant payment services. And uh, so, yeah, they are basically doing the financial services part as of now.
Okay, Malika, uh, uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation, and I really liked it. And the country like ours, we really need cashless wallets. And the situation like this, in pandemic situation, where we can't even move from our home, we need to pay everything, all the bills, um, educational, uh, education bill, fees, and everything uh, over the internet. But um, having uh, saying that, in our country, as you know, uh, like our tangent, Shar also asked the question regarding this. Lots of population are in rural area where you cannot even see the internet access, and without internet access, the uh, the, the uh, wallet like yours is almost impossible, right? So, okay, how how can you? Uh, how, what is your plan for them? How can you assure that the people who are living in rural area can access your wallet? What is your plan? Because uh, as being in uh, academic institutions, when we were trying to connect our students for online, like, online classes or um, examinations, they are complaining that even the mobile data is not working. They need to walk for half an hour or one hour uh, far away from their home to get access to the data packets. So how how this type of wallets will work in our country, basically in rural areas where internet access is really, really bad? Uh, so uh, like you asked about the plan. So what we have is first, uh, on in the first phase, what we are trying to do is we are trying to cre create a program that we understand is necessary for uh, for everyone actually, and then uh, on only on the second phase where uh, we will be addressing the rural areas issue because uh, once we know what we can do, uh, what, once we know the impact we can create, uh, we could also lobby with the uh, uh, telecommunication sectors uh, to provide these kind of facilities in the areas that that uh, that are lagging them. That okay. Okay, one more question. Like, there are already um, uh, wallets, um, uh, like online payment wallets already there, like Iseva and uh, Kalti and all that. And they are saying that only 3% of population is accessing, like, wallets at the moment. Maybe d uh, during this lockdown, uh, the, the percentage was raised. But how can you compete with them and what's your plan how how can you assure that your your wallet will be better than the, theirs so that people will get into it you know yeah uh, so the thing is uh, like you said only three percent have been covered so we need each other to actually uh, make these kind of services uh, available to everyone so as many um, like not as many but uh, all of these wallets that are present here can actually cover different sectors. Like they could focus on different sectors. What we are doing is we are trying to go take a holistic approach to financial literacy. So this will be our strength and we will be focusing on this. So uh, before making uh, these kind of services available, people should actually know how to use them. So uh, the precursor to what we, uh, the, to using our services is providing them uh, the required education that we actually should have got uh, during uh, during our uh, like primary school or during an earlier stage of our life, you know? So what we're trying to do is actually first create a program and then the people will be able to use not only, not just our wallet, but all, uh, all other wallets present in the market. So okay, thanks. Okay thank, you. okay, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, juries. I, I guess that's uh, all Q&A that you have from your side. Thank you, Malika, for a wonderful presentation and the session. Um, now, I would, uh, I would uh, like to request uh, Pat to go to be on board. So mm -hmm. uh, they have two uh, of them. We have Jessalina and Subangi as well. Uh, so both of them uh, um, will be uh, answering the Q&A likewise and their pictures uh, will be shown now. So uh, ju just, um, just a moment. Namaste everyone. Hello, my name is Jessalina Rana. I'm one of the co-founders of pad to go like Sumani ji mentioned, I have my other co-founder Shubhangi also here with me. Uh, both of us have pitched and we hope to uh, explain our pitch and our uh, venture to you. Uh, additionally, I'm also a human rights lawyer and Shubhangi is a civil engineer here in Nepal and we hope you like our pitch. Thank you.
Hi everyone, this is Shubhangi and Jasmina from Pat to Poonathal. From a very young age, we were made to believe that our menstrual cycle made us impure and could only be talked about behind closed doors. Even at our homes, we are referred to as not so during our periods, which in English directly translates to a state of being untouchable. From not being allowed to enter the kitchen or the temple to being kept outside in cow sheds during our periods, 83% of menstruating individuals face some form of restriction during our periods, which negatively impacts our dignity, education, health and sanitation, and social participation. And this is where pad to go comes in. pad to go promotes menstrual health in a holistic manner by implementing a threefold approach. Number one, we provide sanitary napkin vending machines in various parts of the country, and the pads that you do vend out from the machines are cheaper than market rate. Number two, we uh, conduct awareness and interactive sessions with both boys and girls of Nepal. In Nepal, being a patriarchal society, it is imperative to include men in these discussions and normalize discussions around menstrual health. Number three, being a social enterprise, 10% profit from each machine and 100% profit from all the pads are used to construct toilets in rural parts of Nepal. Hence, our customers range from schools and colleges to private companies and public companies and the government of Nepal. So in a span of two years, we have been able to install 135 machines in six out of seven provinces of Nepal. One machine sustains a minimum of 250 menstruating individuals, and 135 machines are sustaining 33,750. In a span of two years, we have also been able to conduct workshops with 54,000 students all over the country. Hence, with our minimum viable product, we have been able to introduce a new and innovative technology to tackle age-old taboos in Nepal. We have also been able to provide pads at a very affordable as well as an accessible way in order to create more awareness. Also, in the rural parts of Nepal, there has been a decrease in the dropout rate of girls from schools. Hence, with the pro profit that we do generate from our machines, as well as from our pads, we use it for our social impact and the revenue, and the revenue is also used to run the company. In a short span of two years, Patugo has gone from being just a concept to a financially sustainable business. We've worked with over 50,000 students and are currently lobbying to remove tax from period products in Nepal. By 2022, we would like to become an environmentally sustainable business, and investors, this is where we need your help. Patugo wants to roll out their own line of biodegradable pads. In Nepal, there are 10 million menstruating individuals, 4 million of whom have access to pads, sanitary pads, disposable pads made out of plastic. These plastic-based pads create tons and tons of waste each year. 1,535 tons of waste is generated each year by these pads. This amount of waste is enough to cover 1,650 football fields. So investors, help us make sure that Nepal moves towards a more sustainable menstrual, menstrual health approach. So what is the market opportunity for biodegradable pads? Considering the similarity in terms of challenges in access and environmental consequences across South Asia, 887 million individuals are our total addressable market. In Nepal, there are 10 million individuals available in the market and 4 million of whom are right now our obtainable market size. In order to make plastic-free periods a reality, we are raising 23,000 US dollars. This would help us establish our own manufacturing unit and roll out pad to goes own line of biodegradable pads. So what is the growth projection like? Our growth projections are looks very positive just through our own minimum viable product, which is our vending machines. By 2022, we, we will be esta establishing 555 machines across the country. And through just our machines each year, we will be able to sell 260,000 pads. Imagine the number of pads we would be able to sell from every retail shop. So why invest in biodegradable pads right now? Investors, the competition market is the correct time to invest in these products right now. We have only two competitors, PSAFE and Niteri. PSAFE's pads are extremely expensive and not available to the public. Niteri, however, has pads which are not available in retail shops. We have the competitive advantage of being lower priced, better quality, and with our brand value of being a social impact business, we would be able to garner more traction towards these biodegradable pads. If you believe in us and invest in our product, it is not just me and Shubhangi who will be working towards making all our dreams a reality, but additionally, you'll be helping 
ensure youth employment of our young employed volunteers and interns as well. So come invest in us, come help us, because pat to go is not just a business, we are a movement, and with your help, we could become a revolution. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, team. Thank you, it was a really wonderful presentation. Um, I would like to, um, uh, just, a, uh, just a small reminder for the jury, um, we will not be exceeding more than uh, five minutes for the Q&A. So just, uh, just keep it a little short. So uh, over to you, uh, Leanne. Oh, thank you so much uh, for the great presentation. Um, this is such an important topic and I'm really glad that you are uh, addressing this. So um, a few things, right? Have you, because you've made so much inroads into uh, having this, uh, has there been any stigma, for example, um, for, for these uh, uh, women to, to go to a vending machine to be able to get pets? Um, because I, I would imagine that I know in other countries already going to a supermarket, right, and being seen in the aisle of a supermarket um, with for feminine products is already quite a stigma. So what, um, how has that been? And has that been any education um, that your team has done? Thank you so much, Leanne, for the question. Uh, so interestingly enough, when we did place the uh, vending machines in the schools, what we saw initially was that there was actually, like you said, a stigma to ask the teachers or ask the administrative for a pad to use it during the school time. And this was something very interesting for us because, you know, there are a lot of schools who have pads donated to them. But one, uh, there is no clarity of who has the pads. And second, there is already a stigma to go ask your teacher or supervisor for the pad. So what we've actually done is that even in rural Nepal and even in Kathmandu in urban places like Kathmandu, we make sure that the venting machine is placed either inside the uh, female toilet or if there's a, gen if there's a gender friendly toilet, it's, it is placed outside. So that it's not uh, a stigma to actually go use the machine and it, you can do it in, in terms of your own convenience. And if you like privacy, you can do it in your own private space as well. So that has been really interesting. And one more thing that we've realized, as I mentioned earlier also, is that even though there are a lot of pads donated to uh, schools in rural Nepal, the machine is actually helping bring forth some form of transparency because now when the female student is actually going to the toilet and seeing that the pad is not there in the machine, they can request their class monitor or they can request the administrator to refill the machine. And this has brought about both transparency and like you said, it has lowered down the stigma to actually go and get access to a pad as well. Thank you. So uh, Tenzing Zee. Uh, so Shivangi and Jasmine, a very nice presentation. So a great job done by you guys. Uh, my question is, uh, you've done a lot of good work so far. My question is more on the growth and uh, scalability. So how do you take a noble idea like yours, uh, which is, as you rightfully pointed out, almost a movement, uh, how do you take it and make it uh, to some extent more commercial, right? Uh, not with a pure profit motive, but in order to scale uh, the commercial aspect would be really important. So how, how do you take uh, a kind of social enterprise model uh, and to try to add more kind of retail specific uh, components uh, so that you can scale uh, your products to uh, women across Nepal? Have you guys looked at the commercial side of this? Um, you know, uh, how, how would women in cities respond to your products? Uh, what would be your distribution channels and things like that? Uh, thank you so much, Tenzinji, for the question. Uh, so as according to the pitch, uh, the only way we are showing how we are going to provide the sanitary, napkin, uh, sanitary napkins are through our vending machines. So through our vending machines itself, there is such a huge growth because uh, the market for the vending machine itself is very low in Nepal. And due to the whole coronavirus situation, we have not been able to reach the potential, but we will be hopefully uh, once this dies down. And again, uh, we're also planning to go through retail. So we are, we'll be going to pharmacies, we'll be going to supermarkets and also online portals. And also something very interesting about biodegradable pads is it's not only safe for the environment, but also safe for ourselves because, you know, with the whole menstrual cups and tampons also coming into the picture there are a lot of uh, stigmas and taboos around it so we are hoping that you know with the biodegradable pads even uh, people in the rural area can use it and also save the environment so that's the way we're planning to go ahead with it and hopefully we'll also have a retail uh, so we've also spoken to a few companies and a few uh, retail shops and pharmacies, and we've done a small uh, market research as such, just in order to understand as to, you know, what kind of pad is required, what sizes are more uh, used by the uh, clients and everything. And we've got a really good, um, 
idea of it that's the only reason that you know right now we would uh, really require we really require some funding because the amount of funding that we do have is not actually enough uh, to make our own pads here but we can import them from india but then again uh, in order to increase the local empowerment we would really like to actually have our own manufacturing company here uh, thank you tanzing ji i hope i answered your question thank you sarita ji Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful presentations and great initiation. And this is really a great topics in case uh, in terms of in our country. But my question is like, how are you planning to reach those women who are living in rural areas who even do, doesn't know how to um, you know use those machines and how can they access your product? Thank you so much, Sarita Ji, for the question. So initially, when Shubhangi and I started with Fat to Go, we always had this vision that menstrual health and the challenges that are in, that are posed by women and menstruating individuals in Nepal is definitely not just in, not just a urban or an issue that happens across the country. So we always had a vision that we wanted to reach rural areas as well. Fortunately, we've had the opportunity to install vending machines across Nepal in both rural and urban places. And maximum of our vending machines are actually in rural areas where we go through partner organizations to place these machines. We also have a training manual that when we do go uh, to schools or uh, to parts of rural Nepal to place these machines, we have a training manual and which helps the person who is going to go install the machine be trained to explain how the machine works. Additionally, we also provide videos on our to conduct the training wants to show a video of the machine they can also do that or prior to being the machine being taken third we also ensure that the person who's providing the training as we mentioned we work with students uh, to ensure destigmatization of conversation around menstruation they actually explain how these machines are worked and the advantage that we have in terms of our machine is that they are adaptable to both rural and urban nepal they are not they do not require battery or electricity. They only require the token that is customized to the machine and the tokens we give to uh, students and uh, students in schools and colleges in each class. And the monitor gives these tokens out when require battery or electricity. They are placed in any type of uh, toilet facility and are available to be adaptable to both rural and urban Nepal. So we ensure that before the machine is placed in any school, we give a thorough understanding is working. And we also teach the students and the teachers of how the mechanics of the machines work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmina. So um, thank you for the wonderful presentation and the Q&A session for the jury. Um, without uh, further delay, um, I would like to invite now Charmin, that is Kill Truck on board. So um, hi, Charmin. Hello everyone, my name is Sharmin Roth. Um, I've been working as a HR, profe uh, HR professional currently. And uh, because I faced a problem during a lockdown of not having a proper free freelancer platform where I, can, I could make some income, uh, I came up with a solution. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy my presentation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sharmin Roth and I'll be presenting my company, Skill Truck. Hire freelancers in Nepal at your budget. Do you know that Nepal is among the top country to send its skilled workforce around the world? In fact, 25% of our GDP, 7.5 billion, is contributed by remittance sent by these skilled workforce. But as COVID happened, 69,000 people have already returned and more are coming. And 62% of the population is vulnerable to job security in Nepal market itself. So what's the problem? Well, working pattern is shifting without any proper Nepal-based platform. Even if Nepalese platform are rising, there's always concern of payment safety and security. And in the international platform, well, Nepal government has restricted international payment gateway to operate in Nepal, making it even costly for freelancers working in international platform. So, Nepal, so Skill Truck is the first ever proper freelancer platform in Nepal for freelancers and employers. While we ensure safe and secure payment system, we also take care of ease of receiving payment from international employers. So is Nepal market ready? 
Well, see for yourself, 12,000 are registered in freelancer.com, 2,000 are registered in Upwork, and 10,000 are registered in TrueLancer. While TrueLancer acquired 90% of the market in past two to three months, few of the freelancers are making more than $100,000 a year in freelancer.com. Now, let me talk about the team. Namaste, my name is Sharmin Roth, and I am the founder of Skilltruck, an MBA graduate from Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. I've been working as a recruitment specialist um, in Nepal market for the past two years and a freelancer myself for more than 10 years. My co-founder for the company is also the managing director of Talent Connects, an HR company in Nepal, who has 95% job placement success rate. Along with him, we have a dream IT team who made this dream possible in the first place. Together, we are stepping into the market of $130 million, while the serviceable available market is $100 million. Skill Truck has a share of market of 3%. I'm sure you're curious about the product. Well, when employers and freelancers sign in, they both get their each individual dashboard. It is as easy as a five step process for an employer. Post a job, receive bids from the freelancers, select the freelancer of your choice, then set milestone for the freelancer while making the payment and receive the task when completed. For freelancer, it is even more easier. All they need to do is post their bid in the task they want to perform, receive offer from the employer, complete the task and submit it. And once the employer approves the task, they can take their payment. For this, skill truck charges 10% commission from the freelancers and 3% fee from the employers. Our average fee is as low as dollar one. And we project our revenue by 2024 to be $10 million. We are not without competition though. Our international competitors are Upwork, Freelancer, TrueLancer. However, these platforms are restricted in Nepal due to the payment restrictions. And it makes it very expensive for freelancers, uh, Nepalese freelancers. So skill truck can uh, tackle those issues, making it more cost effective and ease of payment. In local market, we have rolling plans, a mirror job, online cam, which are only collecting databases so far, and most of their work is manual. So we claim the first mover um, position in the market. We are the first proper local platform. We have pioneered the escrow system as there were no local escrow system available to make the payment safe and secure. We have a compliance team that ensures a proper dispute resolution. Uh, uh, resolution. Then we have an advanced filter feature, which helps freelancer and employer to fish out their requirement as specific as it can get. And we make payment easy. And for all these fabulous features, we are only asking for 100,000 US dollar in financing to reach our target of 400,000 transactions on skill truck in 12 months, while our projected revenue is 400,000 over the 12 months period. We will use this fund to build mobile application in iOS and Android, ramp up our technology, ramp up our hiring, broaden our marketing and content creation, and workplace rent and asset purchases. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarmin, for your wonderful presentation. Um, now, I would li like to request the juries um, to go on with their questions. Thank you so much, Shari, for a great presentation, you know, really great energy uh, level and so it's such a clear presentation. Um, so uh, I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, well, uh, I'll keep mine short. So you said because freelancer, a lot of the competitors that you have named, right, freelancer, they are huge, huge, huge um, existing companies, right? And you said that they, they have payment restrictions, which is the reason why uh, there is a limitation um, to use them in uh, Nepal. Could you tell me more about that, about these payment restrictions and why it's so limiting? So, yes, um, thank you for the question, Leanne. 
um, Nepal, uh, the Central Bank of Nepal, Nepal Rashtra Bank, allows uh, international payment to enter Nepal. But however, when the when they need to send back the money, uh, that is not allowed until unless there's a strong business proof for people. And for individuals who are only working as freelancers, if any dispute were to arise, giving back the payment is uh, a bit difficult. However, when they sign up for Upwork, a freelancer and true lancer, uh, they receive the money in Payoneer or PayPal. And when they need to bring it here, because we do not operate PayPal and Payoneer in Nepal currently, they need to pay extra transaction fee. There's already a processing fee that they need to pay. But after that, when they want to bring the money back home, they need to pay extra to say for one transaction, uh, if they have a USD account in Nepal, then they are paying around uh, $10, which is 1000 rupees. So for every transaction, they are, uh, they are paying uh, $10. So if there are five milestones set and five times payment, then imagine they are paying fifty dollars for one particular task the, usually the freelancing task is much lesser they earn much less um, even the quoting rate of nepali freelancers is much less that is why true lancer freelancer are acquiring nepali freelancers in the first place so just a uh, thank you for that so just a follow-on question which is then your solution is to create a localized escrow service is that correct and so if it's a localized escrow service, you're going to take money from all over the world. And um, how are you going to, in that sense, uh, be able to create one that people trust, right? Because like what you've said, whether it's PayPal, these are names that people trust a lot. Um, to be able to send it to, uh, in that sense, an unknown escrow service may uh, give people a little bit uh, of uncertainty. So how would you overcome that uncertainty? So yes, so we have tied up with a local pay, local payment gateway called Connect IPS. Connect IPS is uh, uh, governed by the government because it is uh, built in the first place from Nepal Clearing House. So we have already tied up with them. So they are they are our main primary payment partner. So we will be using this escrow system uh, with their API, and uh, with this we also have Nepal Stop Payment Gateway like Eseva and Kalti uh, working with us. Over to you, Tenjinsi. Uh, thank you, Sarnin, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I think very innovative product. I think I understand your product in, in the market you're trying to address. Uh, what I may have missed is, is your traction. So basically, uh, where are you with your actual product? Uh, you know, uh, have you tested it? Do you think it's a minimum uh, viable product uh, where are you with that right because that then just thinking from an investor standpoint that is where the, the the less confidence or medium or high confidence comes in right so definitely innovative product i agree nepal needs something like this living in nepal myself very much needed young people smart people but not enough jobs here right this is an amazing solution uh, can you tell me a little, little bit about your traction like what you've done to test your product um, and, and what kind of responses you've received? Thank you. So, so currently, um, our product, um, we have a prototype in a WordPress, uh, created in WordPress uh, in www.skilltruck.com. Uh, however, we wanted it to be in a better language, in a better coding language. And we wanted to ensure that all the safety and security were taken care and the hosting was taken care properly as well. So for that, uh, we are currently in pilot testing. And uh, um, let me tell you before this, um, we, uh, we, uh, I work in a company called Talent Connects. In in fact, uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Talent Connects, and we are engaged with more than 17,390 um, job seekers currently, and 50 plus uh, companies in Nepal. And um, like in the world, IT is the most um, uh, engaged uh, engaged industry in freelancing. So uh, most of our clients are from IT industry themselves. Um, so this is what our traction is currently: that we are uh, engaged in. Uh, uh, in another platform, but uh, currently we are still in the pilot testing phase and uh, we will be launching it soon, uh, probably in October. Very, very 30 second question. Have you heard of a company uh, that is based in Nepal, Nepal operations, but it's, I believe, managed by a foreign individual called Cloud Factory? Have you heard of a company called Cloud Factory? Yes, uh, they are our customers actually. Oh, okay, excellent. Okay, very good. Sorry, Taji. Thank you for the wonderful presentations and great initiations. Actually, the freelancers like us need this platform. But 
how about how can you see the market if there are more no, like more number of freelancers signing in in your platform and less job available how can you just correlate them okay ma'am so our first uh, let me tell you about the we have two segments of customers one is freelancer and one is uh, the employers so for freelancers i think you already got the figures uh, however for employers our first and first primary employers are the smes and msmes that are currently operating in nepal and there are 35000 plus smes and currently we are already involved with 50 plus companies um, so that is our primary uh, segment for the employers after that it's the international employers uh, uh, who will be joining the platform and for that i uh, i can pro probably tell you with confidence that uh, there are many facebook groups of upwork nepal freelancer and true lancer where people who are already signed in and uh, uh, people who are already signed in they are looking for freelancers to employ back here in nepal as well so people who are earning a lot i mean they are bringing in the international employers as well so these are my primary segments ma'am okay thank you Thank you, thank you, Sharmin, and thank you, Juri, for your Q&A session. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Now, um, I would like to request uh, Nikita Acharya from UG Cakes, sorry, UG Bazaar, to hop in, and we will be playing her video now. So, Nikita, are you there? Yeah. Oh. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Nikita Acharya. I'm the co-founder of UZ Bazaar. I'm a serial entrepreneur and I began my entrepreneurial journey around eight years back uh, when I was 19. And uh, this is the third venture. Actually, this is the biggest dream that we co-founders saw. And I think I'm very excited to present this uh, venture in front of you guys today. So here's my piece of cake. Hello everyone, it's such a good feeling that I am able to pitch UC Bazaar in front of you guys today. UC Bazaar started off as a small online shop back in 2012 when me and my co-founder started to sell accessories online. Then we slowly evolved the business model into selling cakes by being one of the first online bakery in Nepal with the brand name Uzi Cake. And now in 2020, we have launched our third venture, UZBazaar.com, which is the first social e-commerce platform in Nepal. Why we started uh, Easy Bazaar? Well, there are a lot of e-commerce platforms in Nepal, but there is a little, uh, too little innovation because all the e-commerce platforms here in Nepal are uh, just uh, using the ready-made uh, framework and listing uh, the same product and pushing it to the consumers. So basically what is happening is uh, all the e-commerce are selling the same products to the same consumers every day and bombarding the same products on the same price. So there's no any innovation left there. And there is no any e-commerce that is user-centric. Nah, so there's no any uh, e-commerce which allows consumers to directly buy and sell their products. And there is no any tailored platform for e-commerce uh, where e-commerce can sell a little sophisticated products like customized cakes and automobiles as well. And that's where Easy Bazaar comes in. Uzi Bazaar is a result of pure technological innovation, which we created over the years of R&D, and we hope to make the lives of businesses as well as users very easy and convenient by allowing them an open platform to sell their products. And since we are user-centric, we also allow the end users to sell their products and get connected with other users uh, to buy and sell the products. So uh, we have also created a system where users can not just connect with other users, but also can send gifts to their loved ones, to their family and friends directly through our uh, platform. So um, this is our MVP for the consumer application. The third picture shows uh, how the consumers can manage their bids, offer, and also sell ticket to the event if they have. Uh, and not just buy and sell, they can also get engaged in fun activities like creating quiz, contests, and selling uh, and um, sharing this with their friends and family to stay engaged. This is our seller dashboard where the uh, sellers can manage their inventory, where they can post their vacancies, and also track the orders they have sent out to, to the consumers. Our major product lines are 
uh, as I have mentioned before, we have three major pro pro uh, product line, and if I have to point uh, these main points, the first is retailing, uh, just like uh, traditional e-commerce, but uh, with a hint of uh, technology and innovation, we have, we have allowed the uh, sellers to easily uh, maintain their own dashboard, maintain their own uh, profile, and uh, where they can easily get the feedback from the consumers and where they can easily answer to the any queries consumers have towards their business. Second is automobile sales and services, where we have allowed consumer, uh, where we have allowed our users to compare the price of available automobile in Nepali market. Third is C2C marketplace, where consumers can directly buy and sell their products. So this is our financial projection for the next five years, and we hope to achieve this through our revenue model, where we'll be taking 5 to 25 percent commission on each sale by registered businesses, 20 to 25 commission on uh, through automobiles, since this is a tailored business, the commission is relatively higher. And we have ad spaces for uh, every deals and uh, uh, products that is available in the uh, businesses, which we can feature on our platform. So there are a lot of uh, ways where we can generate revenue through ads. The market of uh, e-commerce is uh, getting really high, especially in the past six months. The market, total market was 75 million US dollar and it is growing every day and it is growing at an exponential number. The number of people using internet service is also rising and also there is an untapped market of uh, C2C marketplace where users are willing to sell their products online. So we are hoping to tap that market and there is another uh, unexplored market of uh, automobiles in online industry uh, the, where, where the fact remains that uh, the automobile is generating 40% of the total government revenue and it is growing at the rate of 29% every year. So this is where we want to tap in and uh, explore the market. This is our company structure. Uh, we started as two co-founders, now we are a team of 50 youths working together for the same mission. And uh, we have been growing uh, since forever and we want to grow a little faster this time, so hence we require fund. Uh, to upgrade our platform, warehouse, and purchase of delivery vans. And we want to make this thing happen, not just here in Nepal, but we also want to uh, grow globally. And hence, we need your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikita. That was a really wonderful presentation. Hope um, all the audience and even us, we can use the website and write like wonderful things from there as well. So over to you, Juris. Uh, 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 okay, uh, there is uh, one update. Uh, I think uh, Nikita Ji would like to uh, do on their on her presentation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, there is a slight uh, slight mistake in the last slide where it's written five million US dollar. It's actually five million Nepali currency. It's five hundred thousand US dollar. I'm so sorry for that. Sure, no worries. Over to you, Julius. Uh, thank you, Zee. Thank you, Nikita Ji, for again, a very informative and nice presentation. Um, so like you pointed out, um, uh, you know, it, it is a pretty competitive landscape, I guess, even for a uh, pretty uh, small marketplace like Atma. When I say small, I'm comparatively speaking to international markets, but still a sizable market. Uh, you've done really well, I think, in the last couple of years, you made an excellent brand for your company, so on and so forth. I'm still wondering kind of, how the plan is your strategy is to outdo or kind of carve out a certain uh, market share for your company uh, we have some obvious market players who are big who have really good funding from international companies such as the Raz, which is a alibaba owned company just one example and others we can list uh, not to say that you don't have an opportunity but i'm just kind of as a strategy how you plan to always have a certain market share uh, carved out uh, for your business. Uh, thank you, sir, for the question. Actually, uh, it took us around 10, around a decade to come this far. And we have been building this from the roots. So uh, 
you know, uh, a lot of products are what we manufacture ourselves. And uh, for example, cakes. Uh, so cakes, and we have a tailored system for other foods as well. So we can add food products too. So uh, we are, uh, since we are using our own, we have built our own uh, system. We have uh, been self-dependent in technology as well since the very inception. So it will be very uh, kind of easy for us to grow further. So uh, our aim, is to collaborate uh, if we can bring funding uh, if we just don't want to stick in nepal because this uh, business model is quite uh, unique for uh, if you compare to nearby uh, neighbors as well because we are a social e-commerce and we want our consumers to interact as much as they want we want to bring on a lot of traffic and we want to provide consumers to sell their products as well so e-commerce is just one part Doraz is one part uh, uh, food mandus, uh, uh, not all the products right now, but cakes are one part and we have already built a customized system. If you look at our website, uh, you can see uh, the website, uh, it allows you to customize your own cake, which none of the e-commerce in Nepal can do. So we have built our own system that is very different from the uh, current e-commerces and as a consumer, it will be very easy for you to shop uh, from a same uh, e-commerce, right? So you can shop uh, uh, the cakes, the gifts, the other uh, pro products that other e-commerces are providing from the same platform. So I think uh, it will be a quite unique uh, business model here. Uh, over to you, Leanne. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I have a, um, so Nikita, can I um, clarify, when you talk about automobile sales, um, this is delivery services, right? Okay, got it. Um, so I have a question yeah. around the commission. So you said that you take between five to 25% uh, commission fee, but then also 20 to 25% for the delivery services. What, why the um, big spread and, and what is the difference? Uh, Lian, I think my presentation um, uh, was, uh, was trying to say that it is uh, 5 to 25 for the e-commerce module uh, where uh, like the traditional e-commerce which sells other vendors product and it is uh, around 25% margin for the automobiles because automobiles, they have a huge margin. So we'll be gaining our 25% of the revenue through automobile because they are willing to spend. They spend a lot. So uh, that's for the automobile. And for the C2C sector, there are other platforms to earn. So thank you. I, I, I understand that. Um, but why is there such a big difference between 5% to 25% spread? Um, actually, we wanted to uh, not, actually, we did not even want to take uh, any percent in the e-commerce module. We wanted to bring in the vendors so that we could, uh, uh, we could, uh, you know, bring a lot of uh, vendors tied up with us and uh, work together. But we, we had to take minimum amount just because to maintain the technology to, um, just for that, for the operation. So our Understand. major, yeah. But is there a difference between it, when you take 5% from somebody versus you take 25% from somebody? And could you give me an example of, of both of those scenarios? Uh, there, uh, there is 5% uh, for uh, like uh, the fashion industry or cloth, clothing lines. So we will not, uh, we'll be just taking minimum amount where the product margin is little less. So uh, it depends on the range of uh, product final price. So. That's, that's how we are trying to divide the margin. Did I clear myself or? Oh, I think uh, now Saita Ji will be uh, questioning you. Uh, uh, thank you, Nikita, uh, Nikita, for wonderful presentations. And you've been in the market since very long. We have been hearing about your uh, kicks. Okay, so you are trying to not only um, limit it to the Nepal, you want to go in, in international market. Uh, it's better to go in the Asia region, but there is, for e-commerce business, there is a 
pay many issue already uh, like in our country so how are you planning to uh, solve the payment issue from the international market uh, thank you, Sarita, and for the question. Uh, our target for the international would be a uh, long-term vision. Uh, right now, we are focusing on Nepali market itself, and un unless we police our system uh, properly here, uh, we'll definitely won't be able to compete internationally, for sure. So for that, we'll, we are policing the uh, system that can work in Nepali market first, and then uh, maybe so if we get uh, international partners who are willing to work with us, then that's the long-term visa reason we are aiming for. That's the next uh, dream of ours. So for right now, we are looking in the Nepali market and we are trying to grow in Nepali market itself. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Juries, and thank you, Nikita Ji, for your wonderful presentation and the Q&A session. Now, uh, last but not the least, now we have our one another startup that is Zait. Let me present uh, Nikita Raj Bandari Ji. So, uh, hi, Nikita. Um, namaste everyone, I am Nikita Rajmandari, co-founder and CMO at Zeit, which is our platform that is being presented today. Um, my role with Zeit basically juggles between marketing and deploying the tool and training and onboarding of users and clients. I am a social work graduate by profession and um, over, I have over six years of experience working in the development sector, particularly around technology and innovation. Um, prior to this, I was the product manager at UNOPS for an innovation project. Um, it is an honor to present here today alongside such phenomenal strong women. Um, before we begin, I would like to take a moment to thank Leanne, Helena, Sumani Ji, and the entire team of She Loves Tech and Unlimited Ventures for organizing this amazing event. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy the presentation. Namaste everyone, this is Nikita Rajmandari representing Zaid, an integrated remote monitoring and resilience planning platform. As Nepali, we can all remember where we were on the 25th of April 2015 as the ground started shaking. On that day, nearly 9,000 people perished and more than 1 million structures damaged and destroyed, including more than 700,000 houses, 30,000 classrooms and more than 90% of the health facilities in those affected areas. Lucky for us, in retrospect, was the fact that the earthquake hit on a warm Saturday morning when schools were empty and families were outside. It's hard to think about, but you can imagine the devastation if those 30,000 classrooms were full, if women had been cooking in ground floor kitchen, and if families were asleep. After action reports on the Nepal earthquake showed that more than 85% of the building collapsed could be attributed to poor building practices, failures to comply, comply with building codes, follow standard procedures, or address health and safety requirements. Of the estimated damaged buildings, 26% of the households were female-headed, 375 health facilities covering 1.4 million women and girls of reproductive age were affected. An estimated of 93,000 women were pregnant when the earthquake struck. Infrastructure is not gender neutral. The gaps in access to good infrastructure and how it is designed, built and run affects men and women differently. Poor infrastructure in developing countries like Nepal not only costs women and girls time and opportunity, but also jeopardize their overall safety. We have launched site to improve the quality of project delivery throughout Nepal and across the world. We want to help teams build projects, projects that are safer for us and that contribute to a more resilient community. Our product works by building a loop between teams working in the field assigned to deliver projects and managers, engineers, technicians who can ensure the quality and safety of these projects. Teams based on site record work as it is being completed, as they collect data, they are prompted to collect key information related to the quality of the project, health and safety consideration on the site, and other critical indicators specific to that project. Each submission can be reviewed in real time by project management and technical teams, often based remotely, um, who can flag issues and send comments back to field um, teams. Through the app, remote and on-site teams can have a back and forth dialogue between key issues until they are resolved. All of this and the project data is further provided to teams to help with overall management, planning and decision making. 
real-time maps, dashboard, and uh, they provide snapshots of progress and custom reports and APIs, helps team use and generate their data for an unlimited number of reporting, overnight and oversight and management applications. Over the course of the next 10 years, the Asian Development Bank uh, projects between 1.7 to 2.5 trillion US dollars that will be invested in infrastructure projects in South Asia alone. Ensuring these projects are built to quality standards is critical to their ability to deliver the economic development and community resilience they are targeting. We will offer ZAI through a SaaS model, and we plan to work with all key actors in space, including governments, private companies, and international organizations. To start, we are targeting South and Southeast Asia and investment in infrastructure, climate mitigation, and environmental restoration. Improving the quality of project delivery, that is ensuring quality, um, is essential to realizing the process of these investments. We already have one key client in Bangladesh where we will be uh, working on service delivery in the Rohingya refugee camps. And we are actively in conversation with governments and development banks in multiple countries. My colleague and I come from a background of technology, development, and humanitarian response. For the past four years, we have been working with the UN uh, in deploying tech solutions that um, improve the quality of post-disaster reconstruction on more than 100,000 sites in Nepal and across the world. We registered as a B Corp with offices in Thailand and Nepal. We launch our first version next week and we will onboard our first users shortly thereafter. As we demonstrate the utility and demand for our product, we plan to seek further support for growth and scaling, uh, both in participation by both by participating in accelerator accelerators and through uh, funding or investment. With Zite, uh, we are building on our experience um, and expanding our horizon to offer a tool that will immediately help teams deliver better projects today, while um, also starting to build a culture of data and accountability that will help um, them better deliver the social and economic development that can build resilience um, um, to challenges for tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Nikita, for such a wonderful presentation. Um, I would like to request the juries now to take a lead. Um, okay, I guess I can start with my uh, my first question. Uh, uh, very good job, Nikita Ji, for a wonderful presentation and really cool tool. Uh, I was quite excited seeing it because I'm involved with a few hydropower project and management and governance is always such a big issue there. So I was trying to foresee how this could be used there. Uh, my question is more, uh, uh, you know, again, what kind of uh, actual traction? So I'm trying to understand uh, from a user standpoint, right? So conceptually, I understand your project seems, uh, so your tool and platform very interesting and seems applicable, uh, but because I have not personally tried it, right? And, and so it's always different, a conceptual understanding versus practical application. And if, if it connects and seems, then that's perfect, right? So what kind of research have you done from a, a user standpoint? And what kind of feedback have you received? Uh, I believe you said you have one customer in Bangladesh or elsewhere. Um, why did they sign on? How are they using it? And, and just trying to better understand your traction and application towards users. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for the question. Um, um, in terms of users and market, um, engineering projects spend over 5% of projects fixing errors and redoing bad work. Um, health and safety violations on sites can cost companies anywhere from $10,000 to 4 million USD. Um, and collapse infrastructure in the largest, is the largest cost um, post, uh, after post-disaster recovery. So using just that 5% figure, the market for um, tools to improve work is massive. Um, in South Asia alone, between 170 billion to 250 billion US dollars will be invested in infrastructure projects each year over the next decade. Um, based on the 5% figure, that means 8.2 to uh, 12 billion dollars will be spent um, fixing mistakes. So reducing this figure even in half um, and capturing some of the uh, residual value suggests a potential market in South Asia alone for these tools, which could go to over like 400 million um, US dollars per year. Um, uh, as we talked about, we already have started getting um, traction. 
uh, we are providing a SaaS model. Um, the data we generate may open up other opportunities as well. However, we will only explore these after we have gained significant traction uh, from the core product. Um, our first user um, is from IOM Bangladesh. They will be using this for service delivery across the Rohingya, Rohingya refugee camps. Apart from that, uh, we have also been uh, finalized for development bank sponsored technology competitions, which will be a key selling point for both small and um, um, enterprise level users. So we will continue to find low cost ways to gain validation and endorsement from um, key players in sectors, um, especially from large development banks and projects. I hope that answers the question. Uh, thank you, Nikita, for such a wonderful presentation. Um, also, uh, uh, Asian Development Bank, uh, specifically Asian Development Bank Ventures, is one of our global sponsors. And so they are our official impact partner. Um, and they actually look at every single one of our uh, Asian uh, startups. So they will be looking at all of your startups. Um, thank you again uh really really interesting i also had just a very similar question right about about the first users and and uh, now that you've answered it maybe you could uh, uh tell us um how you plan um to really expand and which regions will be of uh importance to you can i get the question again i'm sorry how how are you planning so, to expand in regions so how are you planning to expand uh, and to, to, to scale and which countries or which regions are going to be of a particular uh, interest to you? Okay. Um, so in terms of growth and scaling up, we are looking forward to setting up our operations beyond Asia, obviously, um, especially in Africa and Latin America and build regional support offices to start engaging more aggressively. Um, apart from that, um, expanding and building AI tools for analysis to help users use data um, is also in our pipeline. Um, uh, basically ensuring that we establish Zite as a core uh, data collection platform for infrastructure and site-based project monitoring globally. So we just don't want to stick in Asia. We definitely want to grow and scale uh, and want to make project management simplified across every project, across every sector. So uh, that's our longer term goal. Apart from that, our longer, uh, our longer term goal is also to offer a community portal, which will actually allow um, participation from a wider populace. Just one follow on question. So that's a longer term goal in terms of just your shorter term goals as well. You have your first um, uh, customer uh, IOM in Bangladesh. And I know that you very briefly describe some of the other people that you're talking to. Um, can you tell us maybe, you know, in the next, uh, uh, in terms of like the next couple of months, uh, uh, who you are most likely going to be signing on and what would your second, third, fourth project look like? Okay. So um, obviously our first client is IOM Bangladesh and um, they will be using it um, across their projects. Beyond IOM, we are finalists for two technical competitions. One is the Asian Development Bank uh, competition for um, um, digital impacts. And the other is a Government of India based project with World Bank, uh, which is called Tech Emerge. So these two are um, very recent in our pipeline. Apart from that, we are also presenting in a, an event called Build It uh, Middle East, which is one of the largest competition across Middle East. And um, it has a huge network of people from construction industry, infrastructure industry, uh, working um, around innovations, introducing like cooler stuff to do uh, monitoring across these sectors. So those three are one of our um, most um, recent projects that we'll be working after um, in the coming months. Uh, for the IOM project, this is starting in October, uh, and the timeline for the project is 10 months. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Nikita, for a wonderful presentation and really nice to like us as it's going all over the world. So did I miss or something? Um, did you mention about your team members? And two questions are there. Did you mention your team members? And also, uh, 
right now how are you getting the response from the market like how are how can you see your product uh, at the moment I, we can see your long term goal but at the moment how are you getting feedback from the mar market can you explain a little bit um so i'd like to answer the first question first um our team basically has um um humanitarian um actors um uh, development sector um, professionals as well as technicians. We have a team of eight developers. Um, five of them are full time and three of them are full time. Apart from that, me uh, and my co-founders, Justin and Arun, were working um, in this together. We have um, previous experience um, before this working for the United Nations. We developed a tool there as well, which is okay. used as a um, global corporate tool um, across uh, the UN Ops for monitoring their infrastructure projects. Um, your second question, I'd like to answer your second question. Um, we already have a lot of traction and interest coming through. Um, as I said in my pitch earlier as well, we have gotten um, interest from different organizations, not just um, humanitarian organizations, but development grants and private agencies as well. Currently, we're talking with almost 30 different organizations from different sectors, um, and we can indicate wide, widespread applicab uh, applicability um, um, as soon as we launch our product in October. Thanks. <clears throat> so uh, thank you, thank you. Can may I just ask a 15 yeah, yeah, second sure. question? I may have missed, I apologize. Uh, did you make, uh, ask clear, like, so uh, we, we, we got a basic understanding of your business. So what are you looking for next in terms of external investments? Or, plans for growth, what is your specific ask or need? Um, so yeah, um, I think in terms of growth, as I mentioned before, we are looking to set up uh, offices in different regions, um, offices in different um, countries, trying to build more analysis tools and more AI tools to make our um, tool better that can be integrated with more uh, with more projects. So yeah, that's, that's what our um, a basic growth strategy is for now, expansion, um, and building the tool uh, with other key elements and other key features that will just um, refine the tool even more and make it more robust. And have you identified what that might cost might look like? Just exactly, approximately. That, exactly. That is where we need your help. That is why we're applying for different funds and accelerators and investments. Yes. Uh, we're looking okay. for opportunities um, every day. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, thank you, thank you, jury members, and thank you, Nikita G, for a wonderful presentation. Um, now we are like done with all our startups, the five startups. Um, thank you all of all of you. So uh, meanwhile, uh, the jury will be evaluating you guys, and we will have our next presentation. So uh, I would like to um, I would like to invite our CEO, Alan Sir, for to give his wonderful presentation about what how um, uh, unlimited has um, come across so far and how we have been doing and about our uh, various works um, so far so uh, please um, i would like to request sir to hop in thank you thank you so much thank you sumani uh, really excited to be here and go through some of the uh, wonderful presentations i was uh, uh, I think pleasantly uh, impressed with the quality of the uh, startups that have come across over the number of years, having seen this uh, this sector grow. Uh, just doing a voice check, am I audible? And is my screen, uh, uh, can you see my screen? Can someone just uh, unmute yourself and let me know if you can hear me and uh, whether you can see my screen as well. Yes, sir, we can. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so um, I think uh, this year, uh, the whole, uh, over the number of years, we started our journey with She Loves Tech last year uh, with the first maiden venture uh, last year. And then this year, despite all of the hardships, despite all of the difficulties um, and uh, not being on, in one physical place, we still decided to go ahead to see that uh, that uh, the whole economy needs to be uh, uh, and business needs to continue growing as we do and continue um, expanding as we do. 
the jury members are, are in a different room discussing about your presentations, your business models, and to see how uh, how you can uh, move on to the next phase. I think if you look at the the Xi economy, uh, it's it's interesting how um, it's it's changing dynamics over the number of years. More and more, especially in Nepal, if you look at it, the um, the strings on the purse of the economy, or at least on the at the household level, is with you know, with the female when. Uh, one third of the population nearly is outside the country and sending money back home. And that money is now controlled by women, whereas in the past it was with men. I think this, this so-called she economy, we're seeing more and more entrepreneurs, at least in, in the uh, handicraft sector being controlled by women in Nepal. If you look at all of the um, economic development in uh, uh, happening. So, so uh, at least um, also in the tech field, we are seeing more and more um, female CEOs coming in into the field. And it, even within my organization, we are 200 plus at the moment, and quite a few managers are females um, and have been doing very well and, and moving on. Uh, at Unlimited, with um, I just wanted to start off with my uh, my um, uh, coordinates and uh, active on social media. You can connect with me on, on both Facebook and LinkedIn. But, uh, but with um, Unlimited, uh, we started 28 years ago with a simple vision of uh, making computers work for you. I came back from the US in April and, and in, within a couple of months, we, we set up a very small um, uh, company and, and right across, we've always believed in how do we give back to the, to the society and then always focused on the youth. And, and truly believe that uh, that uh, we can play our own small role in transforming caterpillars to butterfly. In that process, we looked at, uh, as a company, we looked at saying, uh, what are the different um, interventions that we can do with capacity building? Uh, how can we build the, uh, build the knowledge and the skills and upskill uh, people in newer technologies? And, and looked at how can we work with the youth in, in doing this? We looked. We worked very closely with industry giants like Microsoft, and then continued working with saying um, and trying to bring um, across all of the initiatives that that Nepal needs. About 11, 12 years ago, we started working on on entrepreneurship development and uh, took a small team within my organization to Miami, Florida, to go through a training to understand that how can we look at developing entrepreneurs, developing uh, startups, developing venture capitalism, developing uh, training skills, and, and looking at how do we um, build this. So, so within the organization uh, that over the uh, number of years that we've built in, with the core being unlimited, we've expanded and, and moved on. Elaine Memorial Foundation is our, uh, is our uh, nonprofit wing where we help with uh, education sector. We help with uh, with uh, computer labs in rural schools. We've done over 108, 109 computer labs with 20 computers each. Uh, PicoSoft is a connectivity project for rural areas in Dhading, in very remote areas where uh, there is no uh, connectivity that we can connect with, uh, with even 3G or even 2G. We've, we've done wireless connectivity to the household level and to the government ward offices and uh, public libraries and parks there. Um, we have um, we ventured out into fintech area about two years ago, and we started with uh, with Edeva being a, a wallet uh, for Imperial Savings and Credit Cooperative Limited, our own uh, cooperative bank, to be able to do uh, savings and credit products, and then moved on to inter interlinking uh, remittance from overseas, primarily North America, U.S., Canada, and Europe, all of the 28 countries in Europe, and and uh, uh, UK, we still need to get a new license for UK after Brexit, but, uh, but that's where we stand. Uh, then we moved on into education sector. Uh, we, um, we acquired uh, a school called uh, uh, Two Schools, actually, uh, and then uh, converted that into Elaine Memorial School and, and have a, a full-fledged school going on with over 600 students learning at um, with the latest use of technologies being a Microsoft school and yet at the same time uh, looking at uh, extremely low uh, uh, low prices uh, for the school. Uh, we have a joint venture software development wing with a, a Japanese partner called uh, Alien Systems and um, Unlimited Cloud is operational in all of the uh, 
uh, economies in, in Asia to uh, distribute and work with Microsoft. Uh, we have our unlimited uh, cloud US operations out of Texas, and we have the unlimited cloud operations out of Singapore. And we are looking at now the, uh, another uh, rec tech solution out of Singapore coming on. And, and again, I'm going back into my startup era and developing my own startup onto the rec tech area and doing my pitches as well. Um, so with, with unlimited cloud, I think uh, the way that we work with is, is right scope in all of the, uh, the whole APAC countries and trying to see how we work with Microsoft and also go on to the distribution and sales of Microsoft products at the same time co-selling along with Microsoft product and, and uh, having our product on top and, and having uh, Microsoft do the sales as well. Um, we have quite a bit of on online assets, but I'm not going to get into the, uh, uh, the, each of the areas. We build, build, build quite a bit of uh, solutions and, um, and web assets to look at it. But, but in terms of um, the venture that uh, Sumani leads for us, uh, we do a monthly Katharabhyata series. So every month we bring in an uh, uh, inspirational person, uh, someone that we can look up onto and someone that we hope that will inspire the next generation of uh, entrepreneurs and we bring people in. One time I remember when we had uh, Biswas Dakal from Eseva come and talk in Katharabhita, he clearly mentioned that uh, the culture that he've established in his organization is to have everyone call him Dai and for him to also call everyone Dai so that uh, even if it is Pyun uh, or his uh, team making uh, person uh, asked for salaries because he didn't have a good uh, 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 enough revenue to pay salaries on time. And because he was calling him Dai, the pressure for timely salaries was not there. So different techniques of different startups used. Uh, so, and then every month we continue with this. We have a one day training called Ventures Day where we teach people about uh, how to think outside the box and to start looking at um, uh, innovation and uh, looking at uh, how they could uh, get into their own ventures. Then we move on onto a ventures week where within one week they would learn how to convert that, that small spark of an idea that they get and to put that in into a uh, uh, business plan and, and start working on and how do they, and then at the end of the week they would come out with, with a document that they think that they would like to take out onto the market. They would build a canvas around it. They would do some um, testing from of the product onto the market. And, and at the end of the week, they would have uh, something that they would like to get into and, and also vetted by the market to see, is this something that they would like to develop? We have the acceleration program, the pre-accelerator, where within this three months of a, what we call a pre kind of a mini MBA program where they will be working not only on case studies of other organizations, but their own case study, developing the product and making it uh, MVP ready. So over the three months, full-time product uh, project uh, program, they would be creating their solution. We have a, a mentoring program. The online mentoring uh, was not very successful in the past. Both the mentors as well as our uh, startup entrepreneurs didn't take it seriously, but we hope now post COVID, I think the online mentoring might be a little more successful. We have um, incubated, we tried to do an incubation space in the past, but we've not been very successful, even though we had space for eight companies, it went off well, but then later on it petered off and we are now creating a little more newer program for 2021 on, on incubating companies, physical locations and how helping them for a certain period of time so that that runway that they have could get increased with no investments that they need. We've got a small impact fund at a very small uh, startup level that we put some seed funding, extremely small seed funding onto the company so that the first level of uh, seeding that they have and then they could go on to the next level to find their angels and find their other investments or even debt financing that if they can. And then, of course, we run with three competitions. Seed Stars is one of them. Uh, she Loves Tech is one of them. And then Get in the Ring is one of them. So three, we hope that we'll take the best startups from Nepal and take them to the world and you know, get them to be more uh, multinationals uh, later on when they come go through the journey. And then we've been doing this uh, over and over again. Everything in this program is free of cost, except for the pre-accelerator program where they have to deposit 10,000 rupees. If they complete the three months of program, they get that 10,000 rupees back. And so far, I think over 60 companies that have gone through this program, everyone has gotten their money back, except for one company that we had an issue with.
but because this uh, the uh, founder had a motorcycle accident and he was not able to uh, complete the program we still returned the money for him but uh, but the point is not to get the money but the point is to make sure that people are serious about uh, about uh, going through the program and and investing their three months onto themselves building up their skills building up their knowledge building up their product and building up their company and to be able to take it uh, to the next level and and make it uh, uh, if hopefully uh, successful um, we've we've seen a whole lot of companies that we've uh, that we've invested into and uh, in a very small manner and and uh, uh, gone gone big with that and i think as uh, it's it's clear that uh, that as the logo says that we have the she part and then the love stack part both of this uh, is important to be able to create a uh, economy, a she economy, where um, uh, whether that is uh, directly um, uh, the impact of that is felt by by uh, uh, females, uh, or, uh, or whether it started by females and then the impact is for a larger uh, uh, area. But I think all of the solutions that we've seen today, all of the uh, the great solutions that have come out from from you, I think we're we're trying to see how do we get you ready now but they're built for the future and no one can forecast what the future is but but i think uh, the big challenge is is to make you built for the future make you ready now and then give you this platform for you to be able to springboard and go to the next level it's a small effort from our part it's 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 not going to be a life-changing effort but we hope that this will whether you win or not that's not the not the issue of course if you win a few doors might open up, but I think most importantly is for you to have that, that uh, continuous perseverance, the resilience to say, to face uh, defeat and then to get up and then move forward again. And the, the perseverance to keep on continuing, continuing until you get, get uh, successful. And for you to be able to say that this is so important for me, this is, I'm so passionate about this, that I want to make this successful. And then I think to continue on this. And, um, and we hope that the competition that we have for uh, in She Loves Tech will, will open doors for you. We hope that uh, some, of the, um, uh, some of the investments that you're seeking for will, will come up. And I think most importantly that what I would like to see is some unicorn being built out of Nepal. Uh, and of course, that's, that's going to be a very, very uh, high uh, dream to see, to see a, a billion dollar company come out of Nepal. But, but again, I mean, um, uh, definitely it can happen. We still are lacking a lot of elements within the country in terms of policies to make sure that A, uh, FDI, uh, we are a little more friendly with FDI. B, I think uh, support from the government for uh, in different policies for startups, we're still missing a lot. C, that whole venture capital uh, investment scenario, even though it's come in, I think it's still at a that the angel level and at not at the institution level. And I think uh, D um, uh, within the community, within the uh, families that we have, everyone looks upon uh, when uh, you have a, uh, a bank, uh, financial sector, government, or uh, INGO job that's more respected then when you are um, bootstrapping and struggling very hard, working 18 hours with no revenue and hoping that you'll be able to change the future and hoping that you'll be able to build and impact a lot of people's lives with the startup idea that you have, I think that's not respected. So I, the change of the mindset also in, in our families, in our society, in our community, is also required for you, for us to make you ready now and build you for the future. I think the next 18 months for you, the next couple of years for you is going to be extremely difficult, extremely tough. Uh, many times it's going to be um, uh, cash flow issues. Many times it's going to be uh, times when you get up and say, this is hopeless. It's not getting me anywhere. I don't see a future. I would have been better off by, by working for another company and getting a steady salary then working on something that, that could hopefully make it big and, and uh, give my investors 5x, 10x profits. And in the process, I also get uh, my revenue, my valuation, my profits 5x or 10x. Unlike other countries, uh, I'm in Singapore at the moment, and unlike in Singapore or other countries, I think the challenge, the, um, uh, 
the uh, aspirations of, of uh, startups and entrepreneurs is always to look at saying, how do I increase my valuation? This is where I want to be perceived in terms of what the value that I have. And it's calculated with the number of customers you have. It's calculated from the, the perception of the uh, future business that you could generate. And it's also uh, calculated at your super laser focus onto the thing that you're doing and your team and the amount of uh, uh, new innovation or uh, research and development that you have within your product, your understanding of the industry and, and your traction of, of being able to get new customers and being able to build on, onto that. Unfortunately, I think Nepal is not ready for that yet. And the only way that you could make a profit is by increasing your income and reducing your expense and making the profit in between and showing that to your investors as a potential for being invested upon. Not the perception of, of the value that you, you can create for yourself, but I think the perception of the profit that you can make onto your business and then to grow on that. And, and these are different. So when you're talking to a foreigner and, and someone that comes from the, the venture capital mindset, it's so different than when you're talking to an investor in Nepal who is looking at how much profit are you getting. They don't see the future, but what they're looking at is your past balance sheets. And they're looking at on a very banker and a bean counter perspective saying, what is your balance sheets like? How much have you, what's your run rate? What is the, uh, uh, the um, amount that you're burning at and for how long do you have a runway for and at what time do you close down if you don't get more investments and I think that's a very um, uh, uh, fast looking feature whether and then to look at the future and, and move forward so different perspective and I think slowly you would also learn to speak the language of the person that's, that wants to hear and we hope that She Loves Tech becomes a great platform for you to, to leapfrog and, and move forward. Uh, that's all I have for now. If I think, um, I don't know whether uh, questions are allowed, but please go ahead, unmute yourself and, and you could ask questions as well. So please unmute yourself if you have questions and, and I would, uh, uh, so, if there's any questions or comments, uh, things like that, I would be more than happy to answer them. I think our jury is not done yet, so I still have some time and, and hopefully uh, to be able to uh, look at. So um, for, um, for any of you, I. Um, do I see some questions? What is the scope of herbal products? <clears throat> I'm not an expert on this, but, uh, but like any other sector, any other industry, I think uh, definitely there is uh, uh, a market. But again, I mean, uh, having uh, not, not really been uh, an expert for herbal products, um, I don't know. Um, but if you look at it, Every sector, I think there is, there is a scope, there is a market. Um, I, this is a story that I keep on telling everyone. Uh, a Coke shop, the product is the same. They sell YY, they sell Coke, they sell the same products in every corner. Why is it that there is one successful Coke shop, one successful Kirana shop that is able to make a lot of profit? He's able to put his children into a boarding school ride a motorcycle and have a successful life. Whereas the other Coke shop right across the, uh, the street is not able to do it. I think it's all about the drive that the CEO has. It's all about the drive that the, um, and the management skills and then the operation skills. I'm sure similarly, I think Herbal Products also has, has uh, uh, a market for it. I don't know. I'm not an expert on, on Herbal Products and I, I don't know what it is. But definitely, I think, um, and I think the way I see it, it all depends on how you package it, how you are different from the other market, and what your USP unique selling point is, and, and how do you plan to use, uh, especially in today's world, technology to be able to uh, make it easier and, and create a value for your customers. Uh, I have another question here on the chat box that says, uh, sir, I would uh, like to know as a software startup founder, how should I be pitching about possible seed investment after creating an MVP? Thank you. I think the, the whole purpose of the, the MVP 
is for you to look at saying, uh, it's, it's for you to prove um, uh, when you go to the market to see what changes do you need so that the customer, uh, your customer is able to understand the uses of the product. Many times what happens is your focus and your thinking about the product is so different from the thought of the, uh, of the customer and, and you need to, uh, uh, and this is where you might pivot your business and completely change it so that it fits onto the market. Your thought processes about what the market needs could be so different from the reality. And I think that the, the challenge is for you to look at saying, when you have a, uh, and then also for you to uh, pitch to the investor because each of the investor uh, could be different. And when you're looking at, uh, seed investments, it's normally very small. They want to test the waters. They want to see it. They want to see how your commitment onto the field is. And um, my experience about working with, uh, with the young people in, in Nepal is A, the attention span is very, very short. I meet people and then I meet them. I chat with them on social media after six months, nine months, a year. They have changed their idea totally. I've met people in different competitions and in every competition, they have a different idea and totally different uh, business model and their commitment onto, uh, onto the same is, is very different. So I think um, uh, stick to uh, one area and then push for it uh, uh, until uh, uh, you're able to uh, continue doing it. And until you get some success and uh, uh, so I think with that, um, the jury is done. They have the announcement for the top three and I'm going to pass it over to Sumani to take over here from here. Uh, however, I'm going to still um, allow um, one last question. I, uh, I hope the jury is coming back into this room soon and uh, allowing them to another 30 seconds or a minute before they come into the room. So if anyone has any questions, please do ask. Um, and then by the time I think Subani is already in the room and then she can take over and then the drum rolls can begin and then the excitement of the, of the top three we can announce. Before somebody asks their last question, um, can I just say thank you so much, Alan. It's just been such a pleasure to work with you the last two years. It was so, 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 um, so fortunate to be working with uh, Unlimited. Um, Unlimited has been amazing partners to us, and we are so thankful to be able to do this together in Nepal. So thank you very, very much. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. And we truly believe that uh, Nepal needs um, more opportunities for our youths, for our startups. And we hope that this will be uh, uh, a landing page. As a lot of startups have shown, um, hopefully that with uh, She Loves Tech, this is going to be a gateway for, uh, for a Nepalese. And I hope before I die, I'll be able to see one Nepali unicorn at least, you know, at least one Nepali unicorn that has gone a billion dollar valuation. It's, it's a tough call, it's, uh, but. And uh, let's hope uh, that that's going to be a She Loves Tech startup, okay? Yes. A She Loves Tech Nepali startup. Yes, so <laughs> hopefully. So, so I think over to you, Sumani. Yeah, thank you. So thank you for such a wonderful presentation. And thank you for the juries and all the startups who have shown up and done a like, really good job. We had a really tough time. The juries had really tough time evaluating. There was quite some discussion uh, regarding the top three. Uh, so I'd also like to thank the audience who have been such a good audience to listen to us and they've been coming up with the queries. And um, so, so it was all good. So um, I would uh, like to request our juries. Um, so uh, they will be announcing the top three, going with the third one first, second, and the winner. So I hope you guys all the best and let's hear it. Let's hear it from the juries. So on the countdown of three, two, one, I would like to request all the juries to um, say the name of the startup from starting from third one. <laughs> So, uh, sorry, sorry, Taji. 
were you saying? Uh, it's all the jury member are going to announce the winners. Yeah, it's or all the all the three all together on the countdown of three to one. They will be announcing the third one. So uh, all the startups, fingers crossed. <laughs> What's the background noise there? That's the drum roll. That's the drum roll. Music. Somebody's counting my head. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It's making me nervous. Okay. <laughs> so in okay, third so place, we have. Ready? Yes. Ready? One. <laughs> Third, oh, no more drum roll. It's okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. So in third place, we have, ready? One, two, three. Yuji Bazaar. Yuji Bazaar. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Okay, time for that. Congratulations, Yuji Bazaar. You've done a great job, and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Should I read the Hello. Feel free to say a few words if you want to. Go ahead. Thank you very much. It's such a pleasure and honor to receive, uh, to uh, get this uh, like position of third position. So thank you very much to all the judges and thank you to She Loves Tech team for having me here, for allowing me to participate. Thank you to Unlimited Venture for the opportunity and thank you everyone. And good, good luck, luck to uh, good the luck. rest of the participants. Thank you. Good luck, all the best. So uh, before I start with the next one, I'd like to request all the startups to open their cameras and let us see you. All of you? Yeah, let's see in uh, in um, uh, gallery view. Are they excited or not? We are not able to see them we, in the same view, right? I know. And, and as Sumani had said, we really had a really, really tough time deciding. Yeah. Everybody was so good. Um, we really had a really tough time. I guess we are more nervous than these startups, right? I think so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, now let's go with the second runner-up, the first runner-up, sorry. So. Sumani, Sumani, can you please uh, uh, ask technical team to display all the startups um, video in one window so that we can see their expression, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, you can select. Um, uh, you can select and change instead of speak of you. You can click it and then you can select every see everybody in one. You just do that um, on your screen. Yeah, yeah okay. We can do that later after the winner announcement to do a click a picture together. So uh, okay. that won't be a problem. So okay. Um, okay. Yeah. let's move forward to the second place. So juries, all over to you. Okay. So let's get the drum rolls in. I think drum roll could just go like for three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So in second place, it's a really tough decision, but in second place we have one, two, three. Skill truck. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Speaker. Skill truck. You've done a really great job and it's really good initiation. So, uh, Charmin, would you like to share some words? How yes. you feel thank right you. Now? Thank you so much, Judy, for. Uh, for coming up and for She Loves Tech uh, for giving us such a platform to at least present our idea and to know, like, uh, going through the journey, just making this presentation was such an eye-opener for me personally, um, going through the data and what's viable, what's not. So it was a lovely le learning journey as well for me. And um, I wish good luck to all the other team and I hope the best one wins. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you. So any any guesses? Yeah. You can raise your hand who thinks is winner. <laughs> so any uh, guesses from the audience who they want to see the winner is is there anyone? I think uh, I think participants can guess or write in chat, right? I, I think I think we can just continue with uh, just announcing it. Sure, just giving a little suspicious, you know, uh, just to hold this tight. Okay, so um, let's get the rum roll ready and our winner. And our winner is. So the winner is one, two, three. Jai! Right. Yes, oh. congratulations, Jai. Congratulations. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you sweating? I I literally want to cry. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't cry, please. It's really a great moment, and you've done a really good job. I wish you all the best and represent Nepal in international market, and you can do it. Yeah. So we'd like to hear it from you, Nikita. How are you feeling? Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, the entire She Loves Tech team, um, and Unlimited Ventures for this opportunity. Um, against such strong competition, I really do have to count myself lucky to win. Um, and I would like to thank me and um, my entire team for this, um, for their support and the entire jury as well. Um, from the very onset of this competition, I was particularly pleased to even be a part of such an inspiring competition. Um, winning is the whole another level. Um, I'm sure we'll do justice to this and we will definitely, uh, this is definitely a big push and encouragement for the entire team. Um, and yeah, I would also like to thank our um, co-presenters and finalists. Um, a very, very good luck to all of you. Um, you uh, all are doing a remar remarkable job. Um, and I wish to see more women in technology and innovation in Nepal and throughout the world. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. I would like to hear some words from the jury itself for Zaid. Uh, yeah, if I may just add, first of all, congratulations to you. Uh, to all the five participating teams. Um, you know, I know it's a cliche, judges always say it's tough, but it really was a tough decision. That's why it took us quite a while. At the end, it boiled down to a matter of, you know, we had to go down and really question ourselves what the purpose of this competition was. Because on, in terms of individuals, you all being wonderful women founders of um, businesses and, and companies, there was no shortage on that. If you just had to select on that, <laughs> you won't be able to really select a winner today. Uh, but kind of one of the key deciding factors, just so it's clear, was uh, this is part of a broader international competition, right? So this is not just which is a great company in Nepal, it's also which is a great Nepal women-led company which can go international and, and put us at an international platform, right? So so in terms of innovation, scaling, uh, those things were also important in terms of our judging criteria. So I think those are one of the one or two things that helped uh, put Zaid in the kind of number one spot. Not to say that the others were not equally good on so many other fronts, right? Um, but we just felt, you know, if, if, this, if a particular business, if a particular uh, individual is on an international platform competing with, you know, 20, 30 uh, other countries, uh, which one can help us uh, put us up there? And the technology component was really important. At the end of the day, uh, Women in Tech is a celebration about women in technology, right? So. Uh, so, so that um, so that was really important. Uh, but having said that, congratulations to Zaid and all the other participants. Right, I was personally uh, really, really impressed. And uh, so, congratulations to everyone participating today. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Jury. It would have not been possible without you all. So I'd also like to hear a um, few words from Alan sir regarding um, startup. Yeah, I had a lot to talk about earlier, and um, 
So I think uh, the audience might already be uh, uh, fed up with me, but uh, I was, like I said, I began my presentation saying, wow. I mean, I'm ending my presentation saying, wow. I mean, it's not about winning, but but the level of, uh, of the quality of the presentations that I'm seeing today, the quality of the business plans that you're that we are seeing, we, I think the jury must have had, we had to select one winner. But I think all of you up there who've already made it to the top five, you're all winners. Don't let it stop just because the jury didn't take your, uh, take your name. Don't stop. I think this should be another motivation for you to say that I want to be the next company that's going to be named in the top three top. And then, and then I think that should be the zeal and then that should be the driving factor for you to to make it and, and for you to uh, say that definitely I didn't make it this time, but that will not stop me. That should be, drive you more to say that you want to do more, you want to deliver more. Whatever is missing in your business plan to go international, to go uh, regional, to go beyond Nepal's borders and to prove uh, to the rest of the world that we are equal, if not better. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. And I'm like, like Sir said, everyone is a winner. Like top five, it's not, it's not an easy job. There were like applications, which are very, very um, nice and unique ideas. And I must say the ideas were really, um, really good. And the juries, I must emphasize this again and again because they had a really, really tough time selecting the top threes, and we had quite some discussion. So I'd like to congratulate all of you once again. Um, I'd like to thank the jury members, all like Lian, Den Zingzi, and Sarita Ji, all and all each one of you, the start, startups who have like come so far. It's not it's not a, a piece of cake that you have made it through. So it's a really a really tough job. And I'd like to congratulate Nikita Ji once again. She will be representing She Loves Tech Nepal 2020 in the global platform, and she will be competing for the uh, equity fee cash prize. So all the best um, to um, Nikita Ji and all the other startups. I hope uh, we hear a lot of about like a lot of good, good stuff in future. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, our global team. She loves tech. who have been supporting us like since so long in each and every phase. I'd like to thank Helena for being there all the time, you know, uh, from like the dry run sessions and from, uh, you know, how it went yesterday. So it was all the jury and the audience. Uh, Sumani, uh, I kind of missed out in my thing. Uh, Sumani, thank you for running this and thank you for running Microsoft uh, in running Unlimited Ventures. I think you're doing exceptional work and um, and our partnership with uh, She Loves Tech, I think um, despite all the hardships, despite all the troubles, uh, I think we've just begun to scratch the uh, tip of the iceberg just uh, on the surface. I think there's so much more to do and so much more to achieve. And I think um, in future, uh, this this is going to deepen to have uh, more opportunities for companies. But Sumani, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Now, I would uh, like to request all of you to open your cameras. We'll be taking um, a picture together. That would be great. Helena and Sumit as well. We, I'd like to thank Sumit who's on the backing team with me, helping, assisting with the technical stuff. So you can hear those, all the drum rolls and stuff. He was helping me throughout. So, and all the videos and yeah, the audience for a bit. So thank you for being such a wonderful audience and being with us uh, till the last time. So thank you. Um, let's take a picture together. So, Helena? Yep, I uh, have a camera. Hey. Uh, camera, then it's fine. <laughs> no worries. Okay. It, yeah, it would be great if we could have like the, the, the logos there. So it's okay. So let me take a photo. Everybody, please. Uh, say have cheese. Your, yeah, say cheese. Okay. Three, two, one. Two, one. Yay. Okay, yay. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Unlimited, for giving me this opportunity. Congratulations to all top five startups. You were not less than anyone, but it was really a hard time to uh, to uh, select one of the top. And congratulations, Jait. And I wish you all the best uh, for your future endeavor and all the participants. Thank you very much for having me here.
So we will keep you guys updated in our Facebook page uh, and uh, the She Loves Tech page as well. Uh, please like our page and do hear the updates about how the program is going through and how Nikita will be proceeding further and other stuff. So please uh, like our Facebook page to get the updates and we'll uh, be in touch with you, all of you. So um, that's a great job that you guys are doing. All the best, all of you. Um, so see you that, that will be all from our end. Thank you. Thank you for such your time and effort and energy uh, thank you all. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. thank you. Have a good day. All the judges. It was you. really thank nice you, to meet you. Thank you. Yes, very nice to meet everyone. you. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Keep you. Keep going, everyone. Thank Keep you. going. Exactly. Good luck, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much, judges. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.